What's up guys, welcome back to a new video. In this session, we'll be looking at exercises on derivatives where you have to use the chain rule. Traditionally, this is a very difficult topic that confuses a lot of students. And the reason why this is, in my opinion, is because the general solution and method for solving such exercises is very abstract and therefore confusing. This is why in this video, I'll be going over exercises step by step, explaining everything I do along the way. And as always, these exercises start out very basic, but get progressively more difficult and complex towards the end. So feel free to skip around according to your own level. You'll find the timestamps in the comments or in the description below. Before we go to the exercises, I want to take a few seconds to paint the overall picture of how to solve these exercises. So first of all, we have to identify functions which we know the basic derivative of. Then the second step is to take this derivative to whatever is inside of these functions. And then the third step is simply to multiply these results together and we have our general result. It's completely understandable that this is not entirely clear. So let's go into the first exercise. The first exercise is taking the derivative to x of the ln of x squared. The first step is to identify functions of which we know the derivative. And which functions do we see here? Well, we see an ln of x squared in this case, and we see an x squared. So which functions do they derive from? So this one is just an ln of something in this case, an x squared. And x squared is just something squared, right? And how they work together in this specific exercise is that we have an ln of x squared. The second step is to take the derivative of each of these functions separately. Let's do this. The derivative of an ln of say u1 of the ln of u1 and u1 is just a placeholder. It could be x, but that might be confusing with the x that we already had. So we just use a placeholder. I could have easily chosen three dots. This is just one over u1. And in our case, in our exercise, we see that this u1, the thing that is inside of the logarithm is just x squared. So then we rewrite our solution as one over x squared. The second function that we saw was the x squared. So we have d over d u2 of u2 squared. And here again, this u2 is just a placeholder. I could have easily drawn three dots as I did here. We know that the derivative of something squared is just two times this something. So two times u2. And in our case, in this specific exercise, u2, the thing that is squared, is just an x. So then we fill this in again, so we get 2 times x. And we already have our result, because we now will multiply our two results here together. So we have that d over dx of ln of x squared is equal to 1 over x squared times 2x, which is equal to 2 over x, because this x cancels with one power of x here. And we already have our result using this quite easy three-step process. This initial exercise is of course chosen for a specific reason, because here we can very quickly check whether we indeed have the right result, because we know that ln of x to the power of a is simply a times ln of x. And knowing this, we can very simply calculate d of dx of ln of x squared, because we can rewrite this as d of dx of 2 times ln of x, which is simply 2 times d over dx of ln of x, which is of course 2 over x which is indeed the same result as we got with our more generic approach. The next exercise is d over dx 
of the cosine of 3 times x. Again, the first step is identifying functions. So which functions do we see here? Well, we have the cosine of 3x, which basically translates to the cosine of something, which is our first function. And we have a 3x, which is basically the function 3 times something. And as in the previous one, these work together in the sense that we have the cosine of 3 times x. The second step is to derive both of these functions separately to whatever is inside of them. So for the first function, it would be d over du1, and again, u1 is a placeholder, of the cosine of u1 is equal to the sine of u1 with a minus sign in front of it. And again, you can read this as the derivative of a cosinus to whatever is in the cosine is equal to minus the sine. And in our specific exercise, this u1 is basically 3 times x because we have to derive to whatever is inside of this cosine. So we can fill this in for our specific exercise. So we get minus sine of 3x. Now the second function that we have to derive. So d over du2 of 3 times u2 is equal to just 3 because the derivative to something of 3 times something is just 3. And in our case, well, 3 just remains the same because we don't have a u2 here anymore, so we get 3. The third step is multiplying our results. So we have d over dx of the cosine of 3x, our initial exercise, is equal to minus sine of 3x times 3, or written differently, minus 3 times the sine of 3x. And we already have our result right here. Let's go to the next exercise. The next exercise is d over dx of x minus 1 half squared. The first step we have to do is to identify functions. So we see that we have a something between brackets squared and we have a something minus 1 half. And how they work together in this case is that we have our thing squared between brackets and an x minus 1 half. And this is how our functions work together. Well, this is how our functions are nested in another way of saying. The second part is deriving each function separately to whatever is inside of it. So for our first function, it would be d over du1 of u1 squared, which is just 2 times u1. And in our specific example here, what is between brackets is this x minus 1 half. So we get that our result is 2 times x minus 1 half, because u1 Again, in our specific exercise, is this x minus 1 half. The second function that we will have to derive is just something. So it's u2 minus 1 half. And we know that deriving something to that something minus 1 half is simply 1. And in this example, we, all, we also just get 1. Then we multiply our answers together. So we have that d over dx of x minus 1 half squared is equal to 2 times x minus 1 half times 1. And we already have our result right here. Let's go to the next exercise, which is already a bit more complex and has more layers to it, which, which I mean there are more functions inside of functions, but we'll be able to solve it, which is d over dx of the square root of cosine of minus x. 
Again, the first step is to identify functions. And what do we see here? Well, we see a square root of something. And this something in this case is the cosine of minus x. We have another function, the cosine of something. And this something in this case is minus x. And then our third function is actually just minus something because we have minus x. And the way these functions work together is that we have the square root of the cosine of minus x. And these colors, well, they might help you visualize it. The second step, again, is to derive each of these separate functions to whatever is inside of them. So the first one is d over du1 of the square root of u1. And this we just simply know. It is 1 divided by 2 times the square root of u1. And in our specific case, what is this u1? Well, it is everything that is inside of this square root. And in this case, it's cosine of minus x. So our result here is 1 divided by 2 times the square root of cosine of minus x. All right, so the first one's down already. The second one is d over du2 of the cosine of u2, which is easily found as minus the sine of u2. And what is u2 in our case? Well, it's whatever was inside of this cosine. It's minus x. So our result becomes minus sinus of minus x. And then the last one is quite straightforward. So we have d over du3 of minus u3, which simply becomes minus 1. And this basically remains minus 1 because we don't have any variable anymore. The third step is simply multiplying them all together. So we have that d over dx of our complicated function, the square root of the cosine of minus x, is equal to 1 over 2 times the cosine of minus x times minus sine of minus x times minus 1. So let's rewrite this. This is simply this minus sign and this minus sign become a plus sign. So we got sine of minus x divided by 2 times the square root of cosine of minus x. And we have our solution right here in just three simple steps. And it all starts by identifying the functions. And if you've done that correctly, then basically you already aced the exercise. Let's go now to the last exercise. This one is d over dx of e to the power cosine of x squared. And this already looks very arcane, right? So e to the power of cosine of x squared. But let's just go through the steps and we'll get our result. The first step is to identify functions. What do we have here? Well, we have e to the power of something. That's our first function, it's this one. Our second function is again a cosine of something. And in this case, something is x squared. So that's our second function. And our third function is something squared, in this case, x squared. So these are our three functions. And how they work together is that we have e to the power cosine of x, the thing that we derive to, squared. So these are our three nested functions that we'll have to take into account when we do the derivatives. The second step is taking the derivatives of all of these functions to whatever is inside of them. First, we have d over d u1 of this e power, e to the power of u1. And this is simply the same again. So it's e to the power of u1. In our specific exercise, what is u1? u1 is whatever was inside of here. So it's the cosine of x squared. So we again have e to the power cosine of x squared. 
one down, two to go. The next one is d over du2 of cosine of u2, because our second function is a cosine. This is simply minus sine of u2. And in our specific exercise, this u2 is whatever is inside of the cosine, which is an x squared. So in our case, the solution here is sine of x squared, minus sine of x squared. Only one to go, which is the squared one, so u3 of u3 squared, which is simply 2 times u3, and u3 in our specific result is just x. Because we see here, what is squared? Well, x is squared. So we go to the third step, which is basically just multiplying these functions together. The derivative of this very complex looking function, e to the power of cosine of x squared, is simply e to the power of cosine of x squared times minus sine of x squared times 2x. And rewriting this, we simply get minus 2x sine of x squared times e to the power of cosine of x squared. And in this sense, we have our result after three simple steps, which started with identifying functions. This brings us to the end of this session. And I know it's a very difficult topic and it can be confusing at times. But what is most important about these exercises is knowing how to identify these functions and how they relate to each other. And because this is a very confusing topic, I will probably be making a follow-up video with more exercises where you can practice. As always, I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments. I always reply to comments as best as I can. And again, if you really like this video, which means if you learned something, then don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up because this, is, this makes it more likely that other people struggling with this material will find these videos. If you want to get notified by future videos, then you just hit the subscribe button. With that said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.